COVID cases are spiking. And this is going to be a little repeat of 2020. And I need you to get prepared. So for those of you that are conspiracy theorists, um, they listen to Alex Jones all day. Sorry. Almost 400,000 people have died. This thing is real and it's getting worse. Now, this is the scary part. The second version or the second iteration of COVID spreads faster than the original. So I want you to write these golden rules down because we are in a new normal. We will never go back to the old model. So for those of you who are in the workforce before 2007, when the Great Recession hit, it changed how business was done forever. I remember even going to college in 2000 and it was like, man, if you graduate, you're guaranteed a job. And then the Great Recession hit and that wiped, that got wiped away. 2020 has come and we'll talk about it later, uh, the era that we're entering in now. So before it was the information age where we are in a new age now. But here's the thing that I want you to do if you are working, please write this down right now. For every dollar that your company pays you, you need to know how much of a return you are giving them because it's the only thing that is going to give you any security with that company or when it's time to apply for another job. Secondarily, I want to focus on this. You have to break up your time into quadrants of four and you have to have a time for work, a time for play. I'll tell you like this. Never have I been at a funeral and once thought about business when I was there. And companies will not care about you as much. And everyone has seen the meme. If you die today, tomorrow, you know, your job will be on a job board. And that is very true. So as we enter this new normal and things are not going back to how they were before, I want you to pick your own balance for how things are going to be governed in this era for you and your family. One of the biggest trading lessons of the week to all my traders, get your pens out or get your phone out and screenshot this. Once you have a major loss, you have to cut your losses and stop. So number one, I want you to take a break for a week. And after two days, I need you to look at the recording and see what went wrong. So if you go to the book, Market Wizards, which is probably my favorite book on trading. One of the biggest things that people talk about is when they have a big loss, you almost feel like you're in a tornado and you don't know what happened and emotions kick in. But like a player would post game, you need to go through and look at the footage to see what went wrong what happened wrong and what you can do differently so that does not happen again. And number one, number two, if you are, are a trader and you are winning less than 50% of your trades, please write this risk to reward ratio down. I want you to risk one to make 22. Please type in chat, what percentage do you need to be at in order to be profitable if that is your risk to reward? Now, not all products are gonna allow you to do that, but NASDAQ, Dow, Russell, on the future side would allow you to do so. You need to risk one to make 22. So even if you are a bad trader, from a stats perspective, you still need to be able to make money and know what the probability is um, of your trading. I know some of you are gonna kill me, but look, if UFOs are real, then uh, space exploration will be the next frontier. So a couple of weeks ago on IG, I was posting all these like conspiracy videos about UFOs, right? Um, and then, Behind the scenes, you can see there are a couple of tickers up here. Go look at the ticker UFO, the ticker R-O-K-T, Rocket. And then, of course, the amazing Kathy Woods has her own, which is going to focus on space exploration. I think over the next 10 years, there'll be some incredible revelations. But, of course, Amazon and Tesla are already there. Uh, whenever SpaceX goes public, I'm going to be biased towards them because Elon is a great leader. Um, but look at these two ticker symbols tonight. Question for you. I need you to write this in chat. Have you made more money from long-term holding or from trading? Kurt put up a great comment last week. I was told by my uncle, an investor worth a high eight figures, what to do with my money. Only buy growing companies and hold them. Do not trade. You will regret doing that. Now, 20% of people that begin trading stick around for more than a year out of that 20%, only 10% stay around for five years. Here's the great thing though. Even if you never learn how to trade, if you keep your money in the market for a long enough period, a 10 year hold is ideal. You'll beat most people that are actually trading because most traders blow up their account and give all their money back. So I know there's a lot of other things that are sexy, but the tried and true formula here is to hold for 10 years. And if you can hold for 30, that would be absolutely incredible. 
in terms of selectivity, in terms of your allocation, for every 20 investments you see, you have to say no to 19 of them. So for weeks, we've talked about fundamentally what I look at when I assess a company. And we'll talk about another one tonight. But when I'm going through and comparing companies to the primary ones that I like, they have to trump the ones that I have already. And if they don't, you have to let it go. Sometimes because of the amount of media we're taking in, we're like, hey, let me just jump in this one and let's see how it pans out. But remember the number of shares that we own is more important than the price we particularly got in. And we wanna focus on a few concentrated quality companies opposed to having 35 in a portfolio. Trading lesson number three. And for traders, our point of reflection and insights usually happen on the days that we have off. So the futures market was open for half a day. The volume wasn't that high. Um, but the secret is cutting down the number of trades you take for the year. So you can follow this simple matrix. First quarter, I want you to take 12. Second quarter, I want you to take 12 trades. Third quarter, 12. Fourth quarter, you already have an assessment for how the year went. Either we were super bullish, super bearish, or we were ranging. Fourth quarter, you can double the amount of trades and do 24. But too many people trade like they're gambling in Vegas opposed to running it like a business. You want to treat trading like a business year in and year out. Please put trade like it's a business in chat. The top 10 apps of 2020. Now look at these. Zoom, number one, which we're on now, and they're gradually improving. TikTok, right? Third is Disney Plus. Fourth is YouTube, owned by Google. Then Instagram and Facebook. But the thing I want you to notice, how Instagram and Facebook are falling out of favor. Josh last week talked about how Facebook is a communication company. And also, for those of you that are insiders on in the industry, you know that Zuckerberg is not the most favorable CEO. For whatever reason, I don't know if because he blew off Wall Street Week, um, they haven't liked him since then. He isn't the darling entrepreneur and CEO that some of his peers um, are held out to be. So Facebook is sliding down. Snapchat, even though it's lost popularity, it still was downloaded or not a lot. Messenger is underneath Snapchat. Once again, a Facebook product. It's towards the end of the chain. Uh, Gmail, and then of course, Cash App owned by Square. Square is an amazing company. So these are the top 10. But when you see these kind of lists, pay attention to who is up top and who is sliding down. And if you compare 2020 to 2019 and go through 2017 and 2016, you will see that there's a gradual change to the downside. And then of course, TikTok came out of nowhere and, and crushed uh, the market. And I posted this earlier, but I need to have a very honest conversation with you about, for those of you that are trading, if you're not studying every day, it's only because deep down you don't want to win. And if you're over trading, it's because you don't want to win because you are self-sabotaging. I'll tell you like this, if you truly, truly love trading, the act of, and we have some athletes on here, like the, the guys that you have to beat into the gym, they don't want to play ball. And it's okay. You don't have to trade. You can make way more money doing something else. I want you to follow what your passion. I know trading right now is sexy as hell and it's in vogue. And I can't wait till it goes not to being sexy anymore. How I used to be three or four years ago. But when you want it, you will lust after the work that comes with it in order to win. So if you are not studying every day or you feel like it's a chore that you hate, I want you to make the decision either to walk away and be a long-term investor or go all in. But I want you to put in chat, are you gonna go all in or long-term invest? And like I said before, even if you just long-term invest, you're gonna do better than most people who solely trade. Um, last week, Josh talked to us about why PE ratio doesn't matter as much. And I wanna take you down a quick trip down memory lane. So in 2008, because the same, so when you guys are like, hey, Apple's gonna fall apart, this story gets printed every damn year. So in 2008, this is the day like the market lost faith in Apple. Steve was still running it, right? So you, you can see here, had about an 18 cash trailing and 10x forward while maintaining 70% earnings growth for over a year. And it was the same thing. Not enough products. MacBooks are dying. The CEO isn't good. It's boring. We want something new, right? 
but look at the price of Apple then and if you would have held from 2008 through now. So when we're looking at these ratios, and even if you're looking at Benjamin Graham's model or another indicator that you guys can write down is, is Buffett's uh, measurement of the market, they're great ways to calculate, but sometimes they misstep. So if you go and look at this article, you can see Apple's potential was discounted for six months before the recession. And then the market bottomed out and their earning was great and they continued to innovate and continue to make sales like crazy. And they went to the upside. So even if something has a high PE ratio, it's just the cost that you're paying for those earnings. But what if their earning that company is printing earnings like shit and they are non their company does a nonstop print machine, you should not get out of them because of that reason. So sometimes PE ratio and these ratios can be misleading. I think they are a good measurement for the overall index, but there has to be an exception for when a company is top one or two in its field. And this is a point that I need to drive home again for my fundamental and technical traders. There has to be a catalyst for why the market falls. The market isn't going to slide down just because we hit a technical level. That's why you can see we constantly have been hitting all time highs and everyone's like, well, I'm a short here. And I'm like, why? So I hit a high. Like it can go 15% higher before it eventually slides down. So you need a interest rate increase, which we may have soon, a bubble, a weak market. We need something to push it down. And here's a good trick to know. Whatever that catalyst is, it will be on the news as soon as you get off work. As soon as, and then it'll be all over social. So with COVID, if we hit a certain benchmark, if we cross three or four million deaths, that will push the market down a lot. But until then, don't worry. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but Market Mondays is a, is a idea and a real-time course that should be a hell of a lot in real time. But I want you to remember to execute. Kudos okay. to the good brother here um, who's up on Plug and Neo. What I don't want to do is solely entertain you. What I want you to do is for you to be entertained, inspired, and then you execute. So I know some of you are like, hey, you hear one thing, but when you go back and listen, another thing has been said. So for those of you that have wondered if Neo is solid, Plug is solid, yes, I don't think they're the leader in that space, and I don't think that they will be, at least for five or 10 years, but they are solid investments, but they're too high at the moment. And same thing with Boeing. Um, Boeing is not one of the best companies. There's a great lesson here. Sometimes certain assets will come down so much that they are just a steal. So if you can get a house that's worth 200 grand on sale for 25 grand, that's what Boeing looked like when we crashed. I don't love Boeing, but out of the airline sector, it was the only one that I really liked. And then it went up to 229 and sold off and it's been sliding back. So once again, I want to remind you guys to listen, take notes. And even after the episode is over, watch the replay because there's some gems in there that you probably missed. On to fundamentals that matter. Please write, write this down. Rotation is not for you. I've never seen so many retail traders in my life care about rotation for long-term investing. If you're trading, okay, different. But if you're holding for a long period of time, it's not for you. Hedge funds have to spend money every quarter. You don't. And then the second one is mind share. So mind share is when you say a category or brand is the first thing that you think about. So let's play a little game. So if I mention a car company, what's the first car company that comes to your mind? Please type in chat. Okay, now if I mention a sneaker company, what's the first one that comes to mind? Okay, if I mention an electronics company, or let's say computer company to be more specific, which one comes to mind? I love Michael Dell, but nobody's saying Dell. So Mindshare is the one, if you interview 10 people on the street, eight out of 10 would say that particular brand. Mindshare is an equation and fundamental analysis that I think is over, uh, excuse me, underrated, very underrated. Um, and I want to clear this up. So I know some of you have been hitting me up about 24 streams of revenue. I want to be very clear. I'm not saying that I want you to make 24 different businesses or have 24 jobs because that's impossible. But I do want to walk through some of the biggest finance lessons from some of the biggest companies in the world. So if you look at Microsoft, Microsoft has over 101 products. 
if they only needed seven for world domination with all the data that they have, don't you think they would do seven? Apple has 30. Pepsi has over 100. Let's go to all my folks in ATL. Coca-Cola, you can Google this, has 500 brands underneath their umbrella and 3,900 beverage choices. 3,900. So if the magical number was seven, with all the research and brand development that Coca-Cola has done, don't you think seven will be more than enough? So if you're just starting, I don't want you to be upset by hearing this number, but our job is to deliver, to deliver the truth to the community and not bullshit advice that's been shoveled down Instagram and to you by people who are not doing that, but they're on Clubhouse nine hours a day drinking all the kids juicy juice like we're not here for that uh but 3900 choices is a lot of skews but there's a reason for that i'll walk you through a book that i think is probably going to be the next money master of the game from a macro level tonight but a very interesting insight that chamath gave to josh when they were at a conference was they stopped learning 20 years ago what I don't want you guys to do is even hear the information that we give you and just take it for face value. I want you to go review it, read it, and make sure that it's true. Because most people in investing stop learning after year one. And that's how most people end up giving up their edge. Okay? And you guys did an amazing job with the interview with Mark Cuban. I want you guys to go back and look and listen to the interview. But the minimization of risk for how he was protecting his capital and his newfound wealth is the most important lesson in that college strategy that he executed. Could he have made more? Yes, he's done pretty damn well for himself since. Kudos to everybody at IU. But even if you don't have a lot of money, I know the idea is you wanna grow fast, but if you grow fast and you lose fast, what ends up happening for us that are African-American, it breaks your spirit and you leave the market and never come back. It's a unique experience. So the reason why I'm saying defense, 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 why it's not the sexiest thing, it doesn't matter if you have a 200% gainer and then on your next trade, you give back 150% of it or 200% of it, or you get margin called and lose more. So go right down and go look up that strategy that he executed. And I think it will have a tremendous impact on how you invest going forward. This is for the dads. I want you to stop thinking about investing over a short period of time. And I want you to make some funds available for your family for the next hundred years. I think, I think we're thinking about this on too short of a time frame. Is it worth the sacrifice? I think if you love your child, yes. It's my job personally for me and my family to provide for the next 200 years. So the seeds that I lay, I hope Xander or his child does not mess it up, but for the next 200 years, I'll be able to provide a solid foundation for him. And then for the dads who love your children, I think that should be a goal. And next week I'll walk you through some of the steps we can do uh, to make that a reality. And for those of you who are just starting and you feel intimidated, let's look at this. Here's how much you would have made if you would have just invested 500 a month. Type yes in chat if you spent 500 a month partying or on other things that brought you less value. 4% rate of return, which, I mean, investing has considerable risk. Nothing is guaranteed. We cannot uh, project future gains based on past performance, and neither can Rashad or Troy, but I, I think I can comfortably say that we may be able to get you 4% easily. Perhaps. For, for 500 a month for 10 years, you have 73 grand. At 6% return, 81,000. 500 a month over 10 years of an 8% return, you have 91,000. Now I want you to calculate... If you got 18% year over year for 10 years, how much that would be? It's not the dollar amount that you start with. It's the consistency and the action. And some of you figured this out in March. It's like you got in at a great price on some companies, but you only got 10 shares of it. And I was like, damn, if you knew back then what you know now, you probably would have furnished or liquidated everything to furnish those investments going forward. So even if you're starting small, it's okay. It's going to give you confidence to build later. And as we get uh, close to wrapping up, I want to show you how to identify the best companies in a sector 
in less than 90 seconds. So if we take this site is called Guru Focus. So let's go to my favorite. Let's go to technology. Step one, I want you to click on the sector. Is my screen still showing or no? Yeah, yeah it's still showing. Okay, hold on. Let me show the entire screen. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now, this is a Guru Focus. I'm not a paid affiliate or anything. Step one, I want you to click on the sector. Great. Now, after that, I want you to pick on the biggest portion of that pie. So in this case, it would be software. It's 50.8% of the market. So we'll click here. Great. Now we'll go to software. And let's see who runs that space. And you can see clearly by industry weighting, Microsoft is first. And then you have the other smaller players. Notice nobody's ever screaming, damn, I should buy IBM, even though they may have a chance in the next couple of years to go up a little bit higher. Right. And then you can do the same thing with hardware. So let's go look at hardware. We can look at the weighting. Who runs the weighting for hardware? By landslide is Apple. So when I'm literally looking at who is the biggest player in the market, selecting those. And then inside of that category, I'm picking the top two. I don't want the ninth best semiconductor in a space. So let's click on semiconductor. So you can see NVIDIA, solid. Love a lot. Intel, that market share is dying. Great. And you can use this site to see who are the market share leaders in a particular space. And I got a couple more slides and then we'll wrap up. So if you look at the five things the market cares about the most, please screenshot this. There's so much talk about what matters and what moves the market. These are a core five. Number one, the stability of the economy. Is the economy doing good or bad? If the economy is doing good, people are going to spend more. And even companies that are not that talented or that great or have great management will do well. Number two, interest rates. Interest rates have been low for a long time. And when they finally bump this up, man, the market is going to slide back some. And all this free cash that we've been getting out the market and all these easy 18 and 25% gains, they're going to go away. They're going to go away. Number three, earnings of a particular company. So I want you to look at the top two leaders, the top three leaders in the space and see what the earnings are. Number four, it does not get talked about eno enough, but it's really the number of buyers and sellers. There are more buyers in Tesla than there are short sellers. For all the short sellers, may you rest in peace. Stop shorting Tesla. And number five, who is best in the category? Investing is not that hard. Even when we did the mindshare exercise, no one is named the 15th best player in the space. And we are in an efficiency era and this will not go away. So before it was the information age, but the companies that will dominate now are the ones that will make our lives easier, get things for us faster and save us money. So like Roku, Netflix, Zillow. So if you guys have not looked, Zillow is now making an offer on houses. So for my real estate agents, you're going to have to find a way to take care of your customers and clients more and also sell them houses faster. Because the biggest player in the space is now starting to look to eat your lunch and all technology companies usually aim to do this. Domino's, Match. So Match owns everything except Bumble. Um, they are a huge conglomerate. And when I did the interview with Weezy, we talked about that a few months ago. They've been on the tear. And of course, Amazon, the company that makes life easier for us so we don't have to drive and drop off tapes at Blockbuster and get a fine. Netflix is a better pick. Roku is a better pick in comparison. We have now switched to an efficiency era. And for my business owners, you need to find a way to get things delivered to you in a much faster way. 10 years ago, you would have to drive to downtown to meet with Rashad, right? Maybe do lunch. Now, Zoom. We have to streamline everything that we're doing. And then the final thing I want to cover for you is the worst companies of this past decade had a central thing. They were energy focused. The big energy company, we companies we are watching die in front of us. And some will make the adjustment and some will go to clean energy and some will not. And they will die a slow death before a company to draw down 70% or 80% in a year is unfathomable. But we are here at a change right before our eyes. So I appreciate you guys so much. I thank you dearly. I want to remind you to please invest in the market every single month. And if you are going to trade, be dedicated practice your ass off because it's not easy. I love you guys and thank you. 
my graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> <laughs> mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs>